Hello everyone, welcome to Arc Spark Games. This is Robert. Uh, this is the Godot tile map tutorial. Uh, we are going to go over tile maps in Godot. Uh, we'll talk about what they are, the differences between a tile map and a tile sheet. So let's go ahead and define those. What is a tile map? So a tile map is nothing more than a collection of tiles that you can use to quickly draw your game map. A tile sheet is a collection of tiles that <clears throat> may or may not be organized in any way, shape, or form um, that you can use to create your tile map. Um, some of the things that are special about a tile map is that it can contain metadata. Uh, for example, it can contain information about collisions, um, occluder shapes, navigation pathways, a lot of useful things. Um, so the reason why you want to use tile maps is it makes your level design really, really fast. Instead of dropping down individual sprites that you have to create a node for, you can use your tile map to simply paint them across the screen very quickly. Um, another advantage to them, like I discussed just a moment ago, is the fact that you can assign collision shapes to them, uh, the navigation pathways and the colluder shapes as well. So one of the main advantages to using a tile map is just the speed at which you can produce a map for your game. You can also create maps that are very, very large um, and they end up being pretty compact because all your information for the map or a lot of it anyway is actually contained in that tile map node. Um, so right now I have pulled up the Godot tutorial on tile maps. We're going to go through some parts of this, uh, breeze over some other stuff, and we're going to also demo a couple other things like tile setter. Um, and we're going to take a look at single tiles, atlas tiles, setting priority for atlas tiles, um, adding collisions. Uh, to our tiles and we're going to look at some auto tiling as well. So let's go ahead and get started. First on the Godot tutorial page, which is linked down in the description for you, let's go ahead and download the uh, Kenny Abstract Platformer Art Pack. And the link for it is right here and that'll take you to their asset page and just go ahead and click download. In my case, I already have it downloaded. It shows up in a zip, so go ahead and extract that to whatever location you want. And you're going to find a specific file called the tilesheet underscore complete dot PNG. And it should look something like this. So go ahead and take time to do that. I'll be right here. So now that you have your tile sheet complete pack open. We're just going to cut out the tiles that we want to use. So what I'm going to do here is use my selection tool, do a rectangular selection, all the way down to this corner here. I'm going to click Control C, and we're going to open a new canvas and we're just going to make it a very large size. We'll say 1920 by 1080. That's plenty big and we're going to paste this um, set of tiles that we want right here on the canvas and we'll come up here to sprite, click trim and that'll trim it down to size for us. Um, so this, this is the group of tiles that we're going to use for our demo project. Let's go ahead and open up Godot. Uh, what I'm going to do is create a new project and I'm going to call it tiled We'll create the folder then click create and edit And first thing we want to do is create a 2d scene And we're going to call that world And let's go ahead and make our project changes um, that we want to use our project setting changes uh, window. Uh, we'll leave this uh, height and width 1024 by 600. That's fine for this. Uh, we'll put our stretch mode to 2D and our aspect to keep. We'll close that. And so now that we have our world node created, we made our project settings, let's go ahead and create an asset folder in our file hierarchy. So we'll click here in the file system doc, say new folder, assets, enter. 
let's go ahead and open a sprite back up. So this is the asset we want to use. We'll use control A. Well, we didn't have to select it. That's fine. But we'll click file, export, and we're going to name this Kenny underscore asset dot PNG. And we'll click this uh, file menu button and we're just going to put it right into our Godot project. Put in assets, kennyasset.png. And we'll click export. Okay, let's just go ahead and minimize a sprite here. And you don't have to use a sprite. I'm personally just more comfortable in a sprite, so that's what I use. And so the first thing we want to do is select our world node, which is already selected, and we'll add a child to it. And we're going to add the tile map node. Create. And you'll notice here in our inspector, we get several options. Oops. Um, so the mode, we are using square. Uh, they have isometric as a choice if you're making isometric tiles and custom. But we're going to leave it with square, which should be the default. Uh, we can say we want to show collision um, cells. So cells determines your grid here on your um, your editor pane. Um, we'll leave that 64 by 64. Uh, we're not using Y sort yet, um, but we'll so we'll leave that unchecked and. That's pretty much it. So we created our tile map node, and now we actually want to add our tile set, which is the collection of images we're going to use. So here in the inspector, you see tile set. We'll hit the drop down, click new tile set, and then we're going to click tile set again. And that opens this tile set dock down here. I'm just going to drag this up nice and high so we get a good view. And at the bottom left here, you'll see a little plus icon. Let's go ahead and hit that. Click that, excuse me. And we're going to add our assets. And one thing I forgot to do before we add our assets, um, let's open our, uh, from our file tree here, and then we'll find our Kenny asset. And let's look at the import tab. Uh, we want to turn this filter off. So that filter, the, I, I think there's a way to turn it off by default. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, but that what that filter will do is it'll kind of blur your 2D assets. So we want to turn that off. Uh, so we'll click the checkbox and click re-import. Always keep that in mind if you uh, put in bring your assets to the game and they, they look kind of blurry. That filter may be being applied to it. So... Uh, like I said, just click it off and then click re-import and you can actually, if I had multiple PNG files, I could do many at one time, uh, make it kind of easier. So let's switch back over to our scene tab and we'll click tile map again, tile set, and now let's add our Kenny asset. It's the only asset we have, so we'll select it, click open. And you notice it puts it right here in this column for us, and here's another view of it. Uh, so what we're going to do for this part of the tutorial is make single tiles. So single tiles are very simple. Uh, once we've chosen our asset, we're going to click New Single Tile. And you notice the only option we have here is Region. And then you have this little uh, magnet grid button that says Enable Snap Show Grid. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and click that. And now we have this nice grid that's laid on top of our asset. And you, you notice uh, one of the problems with this grid, it's not the correct size. So we have four grid tiles per one image tile. Um, and we can't fix that, unfortunately, yet. Um, so what you want to do is go ahead and start drawing your selection. You notice it's being highlighted in yellow. And now we have some additional options over in our inspector pane. Uh, so let's expand snap options. And it has our step for the X and Y axis, which is 32. 
Now, I just so happen to know that this tile set is 64 by 64 and not 32 by 32. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix that. 64, 64, return. And now we have our grid that encompasses each individual tile. Um, you have some additional options down here. Uh, selected tile. Uh, you can set the name. Uh, you can have the text offset, choose the materials, modulate, uh, tile mode. We've already chosen when we clicked new single tile that's selected for us. It's a single tile. Uh, there's offsets for occluders, navigations, shapes, uh, transformation, and a Z index. We're not going to mess with any of that. Uh, the way this tile set is laid out, we don't need to. All right, let's go ahead and create our first tile here. Uh, you can see as I click each individual tile, it highlights it in yellow. We're going to do this plain dirt tile first. Um, and we're going to change the name of it and just call it dirt. Okay. And let's go ahead and click new tile again. And that's actually going to save it. So there's a couple ways to save this. We haven't actually saved the dirt tile yet. What you could do is either, uh, not control S, but you could either click back to your tile map, or if you have more tiles to add, just click new tile, new single tile again, and it'll save this one we have selected and create another um, tile for us. Uh, in this case, let's go ahead and just click tile map, and you can see we now have our dirt tile. And to paint it, you'll just left click, drag your mouse across the screen, and we have a nice row of dirt tiles. Um, a couple extra tools up here that are pretty useful. Uh, say we want to make a large dirt tile. Um, so we'll draw a rough square, and let's just say we're really bad at drawing. So this looks nothing like a square, but we want it to be a square. Uh, so we'll just come over here to our paint bucket tool and we will fill the inside, come down here, and fill up and clean up our outside. And now we have this, uh, not really a square, but a rectangle. Um, and then after we're done with our paint bucket tool, we can come back to the paint tile. And let's just go ahead and put some gaps here. So this is our dirt, and that's kind of boring. We need more tiles, right? So let's go ahead and click Tile Set again in our inspector. We'll select our imported asset, and we'll say New Single Tile. Um, and you'll notice this is actually a bug in Godot. So I click New Tile, and it's green. I have my region. I have the grid lines applied or it's turned on, but it's not actually displaying anything and I can't do anything. Um, so to get past that, that's a bug in Godot. Uh, what are we using version uh, 3.4 stable to be able to edit this? Let's go ahead and just click this animation down here. It doesn't have to be animation. You could do audio debugger or output. And we'll go ahead and click back over to tile set. And you notice our grid lines come back. We have our tile selected. So let's go ahead and add some additional tiles. We're not going to name them. It will automatically name them for us and increment by one. So this is Kenny Asset PNG1. And we're just going to add some additional tiles. And by additional, I mean all the tiles. Okay, so now we have every single one of these tiles selected as a single tile. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to our tile map node. And you can see here that we have all of our tiles available. So let's zoom out. I'll put that over to the left and drag this over. Um, zoom in here a little bit. So we have all these top tiles. We have a top end. Uh, for the left side, top end for the right side, a single piece. 
Um, these are uh, tops, but they're shallow. They're not quite as deep as their friends left here. And some additional pieces, some slopes, things like that. Little floating pieces. Um, let's go ahead and start filling some of this stuff in, though. We'll take our end corner here, as it has this nice curved corner. We'll place in some middle tiles. And we'll put our end right tile. Uh, we have our single little spire here. We'll put this guy. And as you're doing this, you want to make sure you're selecting the right ones. Like this would be inappropriate because we got that gap there. So let's do that instead. And let's say from this single spire, we actually want to branch off. Maybe we don't want this to be a single spire. Maybe this is going to be our ramp. So let's right click to get rid of that one. And let's put this left end. And so now we have a flat surface to butt up against. And let's say we'll put our um, ramp there. Here we go. Much better. So that's our ramp that our matching side here. And we'll go ahead and start building. And let's see, we'll just make it a short ramp. And now we need a top piece. And there we go. So that could be a nice start to our map we've designed here. Um, let's say maybe this is our player starting position on this little pedestal right here. How about that? Okay. So you can already see some of the advantages of using a tile set. It allows for this really quick level design. You just pick the tiles you need, place them down, um, and you have a platforming map ready to go in a matter of minutes. Let's see, let's go ahead and save this. And uh, let's go drive me crazy. Let's put in some more designs here. Save again, click play, select current scene, and that's our map. And we don't have a camera or anything set up, so we're kind of zoomed into these two individual pieces, but that's okay. Um, so single tiles in a nutshell, really easy. Uh, one of the things we're missing from this, though, of course, is a collision shape. So what I'm going to do uh, is add collision shapes to our tiles. Um, so let's go ahead and come back over to our tile set. And we're not going to add a collision shape on every single one of these, but we'll do a few of them. So to modify an existing tile we have, uh, first we can, uh, because of the bug here, I just clicked over to animation, click back tile set, but we can use these left and right arrows. We click left, you'll notice we go to a tile we've already defined that I call dirt. So let's add collision. So to add collision to that, we can just simply click collision. We can choose square or polygon, click the square. And just like that. And so that's done. And to do our next one, we can just click another arrow. Square. 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 And let's just save that. And we'll come back over here to our tile map. And you notice, well, let me... Yeah, that's fine. So you notice we have all these blue squares and that's because we have show collision turned on and that is everything that we applied a collision shape to on our tile map so if you have a um, anything that can collide they will collide with these surfaces now uh, if you were drawing a polygon example of that let's see let's say Yep, we have this one selected. Let's see. And we want to turn off this uh, enable snap to our setter points. It's not working.
And we'll bring that in. Now, I have my polygon selection um, box created here for this uh, sloping up ramp. Let's save that, come back over. And apparently I didn't use one of those tiles. But if we did, it would look like that. Let me zoom in here. So, and I kind of fudged up on that collision shape. I didn't quite go to the extremes, but you get the idea. So, um, the 64 by 64 tile, obviously you don't want to collide with free space, so you can't use the square. Uh, so you need to use that polygon shape and um, form it around whatever object that you're colliding with on the tile. Uh, let's delete that one. And let's go ahead and turn off showing the collision. Let's hide that for a second. And next thing we're going to talk about are auto tiles or atlas tiles, excuse me. So let's do atlas tiles next. Um, all these have been single tiles, um, but now we're going to do some atlas tiles. We'll select our tile map, come over to tile set. We'll select our asset, and just to make sure we avoid that bug, we'll click animation, come back over to tile set, and we'll say new atlas tile. It's the uh, white option here. Click that. You can see it gives us our region. Let's turn on our enable snap show grid. There's our grid lines, and it's automatically, even though it's not displaying it yet, it's going to use the last used grid lines size by default, which we've already set at 64, 64 when we created our new single tiles. So our Atlas tiles, um, they're useful for a number of things. Essentially, your Atlas tile will be more than one. I, mean, I guess you could make an Atlas tile one, but that would kind of defeat the uh, strength behind it. But we want to select all these dirt tiles here. And that's all we're going to do. We're to start and we'll come over to tile map and now we have this dirt one down here we didn't name it um, but we have that default tile to view and so if we select it you notice we have three different tiles available from this one tile so that's kind of the advantage to one of the advantages to atlas tiles is that you can group your tiles together uh, so we could name this dirt atlas and then we have an atlas of dirt tiles available to us that are organized um so we just select whichever one we want to use and we can paint them how we see fit now another advantage to atlas tiles let's come over here and click tile set we'll select our asset and click next and that is our atlas tile i believe yeah 27 let's rename that to dirt atlas make it a little bit easier so now that we've renamed this dirt atlas let's take a look at priority which is another big advantage of the atlas tile sets um so we have a region selected which shows our three tiles here and let's come over to priority mode and you'll notice we have a priority of one out of three. So every three tiles that are placed, this will be one of them. Same thing for the other tiles. But let's say we want this double diamond tile to show up more frequently. What we'll do is just click the increment operator here and it automatically sets, sets it to two out of four tiles. So that's 50% more often we'll get this double diamond tile. Um, so let's come back over to our tile map and we have dirt, at, uh, dirt Atlas selected. And before you start painting, what you need to do is click enable priority. So with this enable priority checked, you notice our individual tile selection for the Atlas is gone. If we uncheck it, it comes back. And so now when we paint our tiles, we'll zoom in here, put one, two, three, four. So our four tiles, we have our double diamond tile twice because it has a 50% chance of being placed. And so now as we continue drawing, um, we'll, it'll use that priority scheme that we set up. 
So let's go ahead and get rid of these and we'll do that by doing our select tool and highlight everything and just click delete. And so let's come into our dirt blocks here and we're just going to use our dirt atlas to paint all this dirt and we'll see what kind of pattern we get. So there's our pattern that we drew based on our atlas um, and you can see that we have uh, more double diamonds than any other uh, tile. And we'll go ahead and fill this one in too because why not? So there you go. And so that is a quick uh, overview of how the Atlas tile works, some of its main advantages. The, the big deal with that, like I said, is the ability to group them like so. You have three tiles and you just say that's your dirt Atlas so you know everything in there will be a dirt tile. And then setting priority um, on those tiles when you paint them. Uh, another thing that would be really useful for if you're doing like a top-down map and you had patches of grass on your green tiles but you only wanted certain patches of grass to show up very rarely, you would do that instead of manually going down and placing each individual tile, you would use the tile atlas for that. Um, and that would help you paint your map out much faster. Uh, so let's go ahead and just save our project. Um, and let's take a look back at the Godot page. Uh, we'll scroll down here. <clears throat> See, we talked about setting our mode to square, uh, other options, isotromestic and custom. We talked about the cell size. Um, let's see, there's some additional settings that are available. We created our tile set. Let's see, we talked about Atlas tiles. So let's talk about auto tiles. Auto tiles allow you to define a group of tiles. So the region that we'd be selecting would be large and as we paint it'll automatically place tiles down that should be joined to each other um there's three three different types of auto tiles you have two by two um three by three minimal and then there is also uh three by three not minimal um, we're going to talk about all of them, but we're going to focus on the three by three minimal. Um, now what's required for auto tiling is something that's called a bit mask. So in, uh, we'll go ahead and read through this paragraph in two by two mode. Each bit mask contains four bits, one for each corner. A bit is on all cells connected to that corner must be must be filled using the same auto tile. In order for the bit mask to match, for example, if the top left bit is set, the cell directly above the left, direct, see the cell directly above, directly left, and directly above left must be filled. And diagonally above left must be filled. Um, so let's see if we can find an example of that. Let's see where a bit is on if the top left bit is set. So in your two by two, each of these little pink squares, that counts as your bit. If the square is present, that means it's on. And so what we're saying here is if this corner right here is set, the, let's see, all cells connect to the corner must be filled using the same auto tile. Um, so pretty much this bit is touching this tile. It's touching this tile. Um, and it's touching this tile. So that should be three. See if top left bit is set, cell directly above. So that one. The cell directly left. So this one. And the diagonally above left that one exactly what we said so that's how the bit mask works so we know if we paint i'll try to use my finger to point at the screen um so we know if we paint this bit um it's going to automatically connect these other pieces here 
um, based on our bit mask. And this, this can get really confusing really quick. Um, painting the bit mask takes some practice. Um, and you can see what they did in the tutorial here is they gave you some general patterns to follow. Um, so if you're going to create your own two by two auto set, uh, tiles, auto tile set, um, you would draw out your asset or download the asset and apply this bit mask. Uh, but keep in mind when you download these assets off the internet, there's assets all over the internet for tile maps. Uh, there's, um, or tile sets all over the internet. You can download, um, different tile sheets, sprites, things of that nature. And they're not all designed to use this two by two mode. So just because you apply this type of bit mask doesn't mean you're going to get the result you want. Your tile set really needs to be developed for auto tiling. Um, and then there's different types of auto tiling. So not only does it need to be developed for auto tiling, it needs to be developed for a specific point. And you need to be no, you need to be able to know how to draw the bit mask. Um, and the more tiles you have, the more complex that can get. So, we're, and that's actually why we're going to talk about tile setter, uh, because it allows you to do some very easy, uh, tile sets that can get you used to, um, used to the way these bit masks work and how auto tiling works in general. Uh, let's see, we'll talk about three by three minimal. So in three by three minimal mode, each bit mass contains nine bits, four corners, four edges, one center. So if you take this square, for example, you have a center, four corners, and then four edges in your middle piece right there. So that's nine bits. Um, the four corner bit works the same as um, as in a two by two mode. See when each edge bit is on the cell, which shares that edge must be filled when each edge bit is off the cell, which shares that edge must be empty. Um, and so that's a little bit confusing, but we'll do a three by three and kind of show you what it looks like now to have a complete three by three tile set. Um, and make that tile map. It takes a total of 47 tiles. We come down here. Let's see. This is a template. So this is a generic template. It can be used for sideways or fully top-down perspectives. All templates below are designed for the tile map cell size of 64 by 64. But you may use different subtile sizes for top-down templates as described below. And the tutorial goes on to show you all these different bit mask templates. Um, one of the most difficult auto tiles is three by three. The reason why it's very difficult is because it takes a total of 256 unique tiles in order to auto tile. Um, anyway, so if you want to read more about this, it took me several times of reading over it to really get a good grasp on it. Um, I encourage you to use tile setter. Um, and watch, uh, rewatch this tutorial and follow along and kind of work with it um, to get a hang of it. But let's go ahead and minimize this and we'll go back to Godot. And let's add a new tile map. And we'll name this one to Kenny. And we'll just hide it and let's select our new tile map and let's call it auto tile. There we go. So what I'm going to do is use my favorite pixel art software, a Sprite. And by the way, I'm not affiliated with a Sprite. I just enjoy using their product. Um, and it's, it's cheap and I would say it's worth it. But if you have something else you're happy with, by all means use that. Um, Anyway, so we'll say new file, and this time we're going to set a specific size, a specific size, 64 by 64. And let's say we're just going to make a dirt tile. So let's pick a dirt color. We'll use the default palette, uh, do our paint bucket, and just fill it. And we'll say control. No, we don't really need to save it, but we will select it. So control A, control C. 
and we're going to open up the uh, tiled application. So tiled has a, well, let's see, let's do a new project and new isometric. Nope. New orthographic. There we go. Um, so tile setter has a lot of different options that allow you to work with Godot quickly and you can actually modify. Um, this isn't tile setter tutorials what I'm getting to. So what we're going to be doing is pretty basic. Um, and I might end up doing a tutorial video on this later at some point if uh, someone says they want one. But for the time being, we're going to use it pretty simply. Um, so what we've done so far is we opened our tile setter application and we have our a sprite application and we selected our single 64 by 64 tile and we said control C to copy it. We'll come back over to tile setter and we're just going to place it right here by using control V. And you notice my grid is actually much larger. Uh, than my tile or it's much smaller than my tile so let's change our grid size right here and we'll say 64 and let's split my stuff up so let's uh delete all that and let's try pasting this again there we go so now we have our single 64 by 64 dirt tile and we can rearrange this a little bit so what I'm going to do first is select my tile, right click, and I want to create a um, blob tile set. So we're going to say build borders blob. And here we go. So you notice we have this blob tile set. And before we talk about what these white lines are, let's flip over back to Godot page here. And I want you to notice something. So you notice we have these very familiar shapes. We have this like explanation point or bang. Um, we have this window shape with the horizontal piece. We have the dot here. Um, in this case, we have this larger piece. Um, so these should be recognizable. Um, to you and that's because this is the best way to kind of lay it out and visualize it and so that's what tile setter helps you do um, so we have our pieces but if you notice we have this weird kind of white line perforation going over it and so those are our edge pieces so what we have to do is actually still go back and create the edge pieces for this um, another thing to notice is when we created our blob in tile setter, you notice the tile size is still set by 64 by 64, but we now have this little gap right here. So that's something we need to be mindful of. And that's not really an issue, um, but that's because we're going to be adding an edge here. So it gives us, um, I think that's four, uh, four uh, pixels worth of space. Uh, yeah, four pixels is the cutoff. So let's go back to a spray. And now that we've pasted that, we're just going to delete it uh, by hitting the delete key. Uh, let's see. And what we want to do is make some grass edges. So we're going to come in here. And this isn't an art tutorial, so don't be too judgmental but I'm just going to draw some grass. Make it about that big. And we'll try to make it a little bit more interesting. We'll add this darker green, add some lines in here, maybe exceed our main grass portion. All right, so let's control A again and control C. Let's go back over to tile setter, zoom out. And what I wanna do is place that edge tile over here to the side. 
So we'll paste it in with Control V. And let's come off our middle tile here. So you notice on tile setter on the base tile, um, this is our base tile right here that we've selected. And our blob base, there's these question marks. So we need to set what connects to this tile. Um, so let's say here. Or excuse me. Um, so from our middle tile, what we're going to do is set the edge for top center, uh, left, right, and bottom center. So we'll select our middle. We'll come up here on top. And we'll say image. And select our grass. And you notice how it just kind of populated my grass all the way across. And one thing we want to do is kind of zoom in. Remember, we had that little gap. Um, we want to make sure that there is no gap there. Uh, I guess maybe in some cases you might want one. Uh, actually, probably not. Um, and it kind of cleaned up our edges too for us. If you notice, when it got to the edge, it made this nice little straight line. Uh, let's go ahead and set our other edges, though. So from our center, we'll come over here to the left. And we'll come to source image, select our grass, and there it is. Um, and it gives you some options for your image. You don't have to redraw it over and over again. You notice this is in the um, top all the way across, but we applied it right here, and it just so happened that it applied it correctly. But it could have looked like that, which is not what we want. So you can flip these uh, or click these rotation radio buttons here. And it'll rotate it. You just rotate it around till it is where you need it. Um, and you can also, you have the option to flip it on its x-axis or y-axis. Um, we'll leave it just like that. And if you did have a gap, we're going to change this to like 12 because it'll be really noticeable. So now we have this 12 pixel gap all the way around that. And so we'd want to fix that. We could say that looks like three pixels. Uh, let's see, so uh, let's just say nine. And that kind of closed it for us. Um, so now the grass is, it's offset by nine pixels essentially. But we'll just change that. What was it default four? We'll leave it like that. So now we have, oh, we have one more side to define. You can see we still have our white checkered line and that's the right side, so let's pick our edge there we go actually we got two more so let's get this one as well there we go so now we have our familiar looking tile map uh, another awesome thing that tile setter allows you to do is kind of test this out so what we're going to do is highlight our tile map and we're going to come down here and we're going to draw with it see what it looks like so you want to get rid of the select um, come over to draw or paint and we're going to auto tile and so all the hard work of trying to place all 46 of those tiles is being done for you because it's auto tiling and so you can probably already see the massive advantage that would give you um in as far as making your maps Let's see here so that is your dirt path you have all these twisty walkways so you have something down here like a large open area let's say let's see now we want to do um see let's do let's do one more example of this and see what else we can come up with let's go back over to a sprite um, click delete let's get some I like that blue we'll fill that in control a control c and we'll come over to tile setter and we'll just plop that right there Right-click it again, and we'll say Build Blob. And so there's our blob. 
And let's go back to a sprite. And we're going to make a tileable river. Um, oops. So we have our water already, um, but we need like a rocky border. Let's see if we can make it a little bit interesting. So let's control A, control C, move back over to tile setter, just off to the side anywhere, we'll paste that in. And so now we have our rock border. So let's uh, off our center tile here. We'll go ahead and start applying our edges. Okay, and let's select our sets. We'll come over here and just start painting it in. So now we have this nice uh, paintable river system that has a really nice little, maybe not really nice, but has a little rock border around it. And so that could be, we'll do something like this. Maybe we have our path and little ponds in between it maybe one right there and you notice as i modified that because of the way the auto tile works i erase that center tile and so he immediately says okay i don't recognize this tile but we're going to put these edges around it And maybe don't, we don't like that rock path around it or those little rocky looking edges. Maybe we want something else. So we could just come here, control C, control V, we'll make another blob. And we could add the grass edges to it. For example, we'll do this. Okay, so let's draw our water with grass edges. Oopsie. Visually now this is kind of start not to make starting to not make a lot of sense. Um, but what I want you to understand is how easy and quick you can kind of put these tiles together. Uh, would you want your map to look like this? Probably not. Um, but you design your tiles out and you'll be able to make it look however you want very, very quickly. Um, so we could say this is our test level. You know, we, we're happy with the way this looks. We're happy with the way it's tiling. We were able to test it out. It looks good. Um, so now 
let's say we want to let's go ahead and do this dirt path down here um, say I want to use this in Godot what I'm going to do is highlight the map for this set right click on it and we'll say export and you see there's a bunch of different options here uh, regardless so you have a lot of different game engine options um, or just an image and we'll say Godot and let's see our Godot project was called tiled we'll put it in the assets folder we'll say auto tile so let's hop back over to Godot and we have our auto tile folder that was created and we have two uh, two assets that were created for us. So we have the PNG, and we have this .tres file. Now, this is what one of the things that makes tile setter so powerful. Um, you remember all the settings we had to go through here to um, get our tile set configured. What we can do with this .trace file, we'll just call it trace. I don't know if that's the best way to say it, but we'll drag it over onto our auto tile node. And like magic, we have all our settings that we need already defined in this trace file. So if we look at the tile set, we'll select that. There it is. Um, let's click so we can see that it created our three by three minimal pattern we select bit mask it's already drawn in our bit mask for us um, there's no collision on it we'd have to add that ourselves but it has drawn our bit mask so we don't have to draw the bit mask because that can get kind of tedious too and i'll give you an example so the three by three we'll turn all these off you literally have to come in here and paint them there's your center um uh, middle right You'd have to sit here and paint every single one of these in. And the problem is, if you're not familiar with this pattern, this can be kind of tedious. You can make mistakes. Um, so Tile Setter does a really good job of just making it extremely easy. And that's why I like using it. Um, and we've only kind of, we've scratched the surface for Tile Setter. It can do a whole lot more for you. That's very, very useful. Um, but this is kind of what I want to go over today. So let's come back to our auto tile and just kind of draw some stuff out. We'll say that's our map. Um, and now maybe I want just um, a sub floor in here. So we could do this. And we'll say new single tile. Oh, there's that bug. New single tile. Dirt. And let's just paint it in. Maybe let's do it like this. We'll use our bucket. We get a nice square. And maybe this is what your map you want your map to look like. You know, probably not, but once again, this is just kind of an example. Uh, let's go ahead and play. And there you go. So there's your nice example of auto tiling. Um, see, a couple other things I want to touch on. Um, so when you have a character on your tiles, one thing that can happen when you're moving your character across the screen, you can get some flicker. Um, to get rid of that, what you want to do is come into project settings and see if I can remember where it is. I may have to reference the uh, Godot tutorial. 2D. Yep. So under rendering 2D, you have this use NVIDIA Rect Flicker workaround. So for some NVIDIA graphics cards, you get a big flicker. Um, so you can turn that on. 
that's an issue. And something else you want to enable when you're using tile sets is this GPU pixel snap. That's pretty important as well. That'll that'll stop that flickering and uh, kind of make sure your your that. So I don't know the best way to describe it, but if you're having flickering, that should clear it up. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card still the flickering, you can click that additional checkbox up here. Um, but both these settings, especially this one, I would just go ahead and turn it on if you're going to be using a tile set. Let's see. Uh, forces snapping of vertices and pixels and 2D rendering may help some pixel art styles. The snapping is performed on the GPU in a vertex shader. So that gives you a little bit of information about it there. That tool tip. Um, okay, guys. So I think we're going to wrap it up right here. Um, if you got anything out of this video, please hit the like button. It would uh, do great things for the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it myself. Uh, if you have any comments about tile setter, you want to see a certain video, make a comment, um, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to be notified, ring the bell. I'm going to sign out for tonight. Um, so goodbye until next time.